it comes down to a question of how much capability do you want with your EDC knife? And if you want about the most you can get, a fixed blade is gonna be the way to go. And the Azula, I think, gives you about as much capability per ounce as anything else can. Hello my friends, it's a late Boy Scout and this is my review of the Essie Izula. A very cool, very small fixed blade knife for survival or EDC or both. And we're going to talk about that as the review progresses. Before we get into sort of the role, the philosophy of how you might use this small fixed blade knife made of 1095 steel weighing in at like two ounces or something. Oh man, that's a pretty, pretty awesome little weight for a very capable little knife. Before we get into what you might use this for, let's start off kind of backwards. Let's first show you some of the cool varieties you can get of this knife. Now, of course, it comes without the cord wrapping around the handle, and this is my cord wrap job. Pretty much the same one that, um, that Essie recommends, or at least that they sort of show off. And there are different ways you can do it. You don't have to follow this particular pattern, which was very simple. I kind of turned this around and did my own little touch to it. Rather than having the cord sort of hanging out this way, the knot on the outside, I positioned the cord so that I could bring the knot to the inside of this hole, like so, and just tuck the remaining uh, cord underneath that little bit of cord there. So it's a very flush, very flat, still cord wrapped knife. It's very useful in hand. Anyway, I was gonna say we're gonna show you some variety, so let's go ahead and do that. This is the OD Green version, as you can plainly tell, OD Green, and it's got some use on it, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, what other colors can you get it in? It comes in a pretty wide variety of them. Gray, a nice steely gray. And that is coated. They are all coated. They're all the 1095 steel. Very nice, very hard steel. Also, if you like desert tan, you can have desert tan. I almost bought the desert tan. <laughs> wow, that's a really cool color. All these on loan. Besides this one, of course, that one's mine. But the rest of these are on loan from my friends at Blade HQ. Thanks very much. Uh, so that I can make the review a little more interesting by showing you some variety. So there's the desert tan one. Also very cool to look at. Moving on, there's also, and this is probably my second favorite, and I don't think the camera's doing justice. No, it's not. It's coming across as kind of orange on screen, I think, and sorry about that. It's not orange. It is a fiery red, and it's beautiful. I mean, it is really, really cool. Second favorite, easily. Easily my second favorite right there. Now, one that I'm not going to show you because I didn't get it is the Venom Green one. Uh, or zombie green, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that's another option if you like that sort of bright neon sort of green. And pink. And pink, of course. A nice soft kind of powder pink. So if you like the pink colors, if you're going to get this for your wife, your girlfriend, want her to have a nice capable knife, either for EDC or for outdoor emergency use, she might uh, warm up to the pink one a little faster. Then, of course, we're going to just talk about, well, we're not really going to talk about it, but I want to mention briefly the SE Azula 2, Azula 2, if I can get my words out. The Azula tool, and in black, by the way, all these come in black. The Azula comes in black as well. Uh, so, yeah, there's the Azula tool, which is, I believe, a little bit longer in handle. A little bit longer. You can see that as we match the blades up, the blade shape is pretty much identical, near as I can tell. But you've got a longer handle on the Azula 2, meaning you can get a nice full grip on that, get some comfortable cutting done with this knife. So if EDC is not going to be in, not on your mind at all in regards to this knife, the Azula 2 might be more up your alley, again, because you've got some nice, comfortable micarta scales on there that really do cover that thing fully, uh, very, very nicely. Making it so that, uh, sorry guys, I got a fly in here and it's really bugging the crap out of me. Making it so that you can get that. I'm going to chop that fly with the Azula 2 if I get a chance. All right, anyway, making it so you can get some nice hard work done like fly killing if you have to um, with the Azula 2. So really cool if you want that one. So those are some varieties, but it's if we're going to clear these off the table, which we need to do in a minute here, uh, just wanted to kind of mention that you know you can get it in all kinds of different colors and it's 
equally capable no matter what color you get it in, though it might be a little more intimidating if you get it in fire ant red. Holy mackerel, that is scary looking. The Azula, by the way, with the fire ant on the blade, gets its name from an Amazon ant called the Azula that um, is known for being pretty aggressive, tenacious, and really tough, and of course small, which the knife also is. By the way, all of these share the exact same um, sheath, which is a molded plastic, but it works great. And uh, the Izula 2 also fits into the exact same sheath. So good to know, and uh, pretty good sheath. I don't see a downside to it at all. So taking all those other colors off the table, once again, this is a very small, very stout fixed blade knife. How thick is it? I'm not positive. Thick enough. With a nice, strong tip on it, a beautiful belly to it. Just an excellent, very versatile blade shape going on there. Comes razor sharp. Holds and takes a razor sharp edge with that, with that 1095 steel. Jimping on the spine, which is completely co covered in that coating, makes it not real aggressive. It's just barely there. It's just kind of there, not, not really biting back at all. With the cord wrapping going on, it makes for um, a fairly comfortable grip, not for extended use at all. I did put this through some extended use. I did uh, some, what did I do with it? Well, to start, and this is kind of weird. I started off by actually batoning it for a little while. I happened to have this knife on me as an EDC tester, you know, testing it for EDC purposes. And so I batoned some firewood when we were having a little uh, backyard fire and nobody had any means, not a hatchet or anything, any means of taking that wood apart and getting it into kindling. So I pulled out my EDC fixed blade, the Azula, and started taking some of that wood apart and it did a pretty nice job of it. So that's why we see some streaks in the finish there. That's from that sort of hard batoning use. Also, did put it through some standard sort of EDC tests. Cut some newspaper with it. Tried to see if that edge was going to be as razor sharp as I thought it was. Not, not too disappointed. It did a pretty nice job of that. I'd say uh, some other knives did a little better, but uh, it did just fine slicing through that paper. Moving on, went on to some cardboard. And I gotta say, I was a little disappointed in the Azula when it came to cardboard. It just sort of wanted to hang up on that cardboard. Now this was some double wall stuff, some fairly thick cardboard, but I don't think that's an excuse. You know, other knives that I tested through that exact same cardboard did amazing. The Azula was hanging up and slowing down, and I gotta attribute that to the textured, the textured coating on it. I believe that's what the reason was for that. Uh, but then moving on to some wood, some uh, maple, some branches that I had some, from some pruning. I took that stuff apart using a, a variety of uh, different holds of the knife, you know, doing some power cuts, pulling across the chest with the backward sort of grip on the knife, and uh, holding it by the knee and all that other kind of stuff, doing some other pull cuts and so forth. Things that you might do either in a wilderness scenario, an emergency scenario, or possibly EDC, depending on your EDC situation. But what is the real role of a fixed blade for everyday carry? Well, it kind of comes down to this. How much capability do you want with your EDC knife? Now, when I think of EDC knives, here's what I think of. Benchmade Mini Griptilian. That's one of the first knives I think of when it comes to EDC, one of my favorites. I might also think of Spyderco Persian 2 Small. I might also, th might also think of the CRKT M2112 GD. Those are some great EDC knives, and these are ones that are fairly stout. We'll get some good hard cutting done, I'd say. Relatively hard cutting done. Some others that uh, might be put in the EDC Plus category, the Paramilitary 2 by Spider Co. How about the Benchmade McHenry & Williams 710? Definitely some harder use folding knives right there. But will any of these folding knives be able to bear the same hard use as a fixed blade knife? That's what it comes down to, and that's the question. And my wager is, what I'm betting is, no. Not one of these folding knives will hold up in regards to torsional rigidity and torsional pressure, the bending that you might have to put your knife through, 
due to the fact that they've got a pivot, that they are a mechanical device, and there is no machine, no mechanics to this. It's a simple slab of steel that's been sharpened and shaped to fit into your hand comfortably so that you can use it as a tool and carry it fairly easily, again, due to its size. So, again, it comes down to a question of how much capability do you want with your EDC knife? And if you want about the most you can get, a fixed blade is going to be the way to go. And the Azula, I think, gives you about as much capability per ounce as anything else can. That's my bet. That's my belief. Again, at around two ounces, I don't think you're going to get a tougher knife. Now let's talk about some of the ways you might carry your Azula. Here's how I carry mine. Here's the sheath, and here's kind of what I've set up on here. What I did initially was I took some Velcro, some glue back Velcro. You can see it down there. There's the, the uh, hook side of it. And that is just sort of stuck to the back of this. And there's some more of it. Stuck to the back of the sheath here. And then I've got some other Velcro, okay, with no glue on the back that I wrapped around, sized just right, so that I could slip my belt through there and wear this horizontally on my belt. So if you imagine my belt, just like this, kind of coming through. That's kind of how it sat. And I'll give you a closer look at that, actually. So as I turn around and you look at my, my profile there, you probably don't see that I have something under my, my sweatshirt there, my, um, my pullover. And, but I do. I've got this knife here. And it's pretty easy to carry. It's extremely light. I forget that I have it on. I can drive all day with it. I can sit all day with it. I can walk all day with it. Forget that I have it there. It's not noticeable to other people, whether I've got something over it that's baggy or fairly loose or just a t-shirt. The, the folds in my shirt kind of hide the, um, the little protrusion of that handle. It's very difficult, I think, to notice that it's there. Making that carry uh, option a pretty nice one, in my opinion, and pretty comfortable, pretty useful. And again, a, a great place to have your knife if this is going to be a sort of a secondary go-to knife, not one that you necessarily go to for everything, but sort of the, 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 the knife with the most capabilities that you have on you that's also very, very carryable. Whereas you might go to your pocket for a smaller knife um, or a lighter knife or a folding knife, whatever the case may be. But this is the one that's got you know, all the capabilities and it's there riding on your belt. What are some other ways you might carry your Azula? Well, depending on how big your pockets are, this is actually very flat, not all that long, and can easily, I think, fit in most front pockets. If you, carry car if you wear cargo pockets, it'll definitely fit in cargo pockets, but just in your front pocket, it fits perfectly in mine. I bet it'll fit fine in yours. It doesn't, you know, it's so flat and doesn't hardly move around very much. I think this is not going to be much bigger than, I don't know, a cell phone these days or, or very much else. So you could easily carry this in a front pocket, just kind of whip it out, you know, unsheath it, use it however you need to use it, and then slip the entire package back into your pocket. Now that's not the only way. This is just the way that I've chosen to do it. There are lots of other ways you can carry this knife. And we'll talk about the kit, actually, that, um, that it, Essie sells with some of the with some of the Azulas. You can buy some Azulas that will come with the kit. And the Azula kit is pretty cool. It jacks the price up by about $20. Do I think that's worth it? I do. Would I buy the kit? Um probably not, simply because I can do a lot of what this, you know, a lot of the capabilities this kit gives you, I can kind of do with just paracord or something like that. But here's some of what it gives you. You've got this great little plate here that you can just screw on to the sheath and then carry your knife vertically like so. Okay, so if you would like to carry it on your hip like that, just vertically, clipped on. Again, it's just a kind of a little bendy clip like that, clips onto your belt. Man, that would be a really, really cool way to carry your Azula. Um, yeah. You might buy the kit just for that, because that is a very cool option, I think. Uh, and again, it makes it so that you can just sort of slip that on your belt, slip it back off, and, you know, whatever you want to do. But that's just one piece that comes with it, and it's a very cool one. You've also got some paracord if you want to turn this into a neck knife. 
You can easily do that by slipping it through that hole and carrying it around your neck. And then a whole bunch of paracord attachment options, plus some interesting information from Randall's Adventure Training. Okay, and a nice little card giving you some pretty cool little uh, survival information. That's pretty awesome. But this sheet right here gives you all the information about everything that comes with it. Some nuts and washers right over here. Um, a little um, a little keeper for your paracord. A little you know lock or cord stop, whatever you want to call that thing. A couple of these little key rings. If you decide to carry it as a on a key ring of some kind, these can also be employed in creating traps and things like that. There's also a little survival a fire starter here. Magnesium, uh, magnesium here, and a little, you know, fire starting rod going on there. So you can attach that to the key ring or whatever, carry this in a number of ways. Then this right here is a whistle that uh, would kind of also, you know, I'll just show you on the paper because it's got all the information right here. So, yeah, this whistle has kind of like a paracord attachment to it. The ends kind of go in there and it locks it up and then you've got a whistle on the end. And it gives you a whole lot of different ways to to wrap a paracord using that uh, cord lock and, and attaching that to your belt. Wrap the paracord around here, just around the sheath if you want to store it that way. Uh, it gives you a lot of ideas for how to carry your Azula and also how to wrap it. Uh, if you don't know how to do that wrap that I showed you, it gives you instructions for that. Plus a lot of other information telling you what you've got in the pack. But that is the kit. Again, I think it's worth buying. $20 is quite a bit of stuff. Would I buy it? Mostly no, because of the fact that I think I can accomplish most of what I what this has uh, with just paracord or with stuff I've already got on hand. But uh, that's just me. Uh, it, it is a pretty cool kit, so you might want to think about picking that up. If I had to criticize the SE Azula, probably the one hit I would give it is that textured coating. Now, those of you who are SE purists and just love SE stuff, probably know and understand why that textured coating is there. You know, the benefits that that textured coating gives. Um, I'm sure, go ahead and chime in and tell me why that textured coating is there if you know. I can't for the life of me figure it out. I mean, that just, it slows the knife down going through materials. And whether that's cardboard, paper, wood, whatever, I think it's just a detriment to the blade, to the edge to the usefulness and the utility of this knife. I, if I had an easy way to do it real quick, I would scrape all that off. Uh, I may, I'll probably get around to that eventually. I don't like it. I, I don't want that textured coating on there. I, I'd love some coating. Some kind of a slick coating would be fine. Or maybe it doesn't even have to be that slick, but as long as it's not super textured, here's the paramilitary. It's got a coating on it, but it's not, you know, it's not textured. It's covering up the blade pretty nicely, and it's got a nice black coating on there. Why couldn't you put something like that on it, Essie? I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. If you guys know, go ahead and chime in and tell me. The Benchmade is nice, nice and slick black coating on there, not textured at all, not to any degree that I can tell. It is kind of a matte finish, but still not really textured. This textured coating just baffles me, just blows me away. Anyway, that is pretty much the only hit I can give to the SE Azula. Aside from that, I think it is an awesome knife. I've loved carrying this thing on my belt. Love the little bit of capability that it gives me. Feels great to be a hero sometimes and come in and split some firewood when your friends are having a backyard fire and nobody's got any kind of a large knife or hatchet and you can take care of it. You know, you can help people out. And that's not all. That's, I mean, think of there are probably a myriad ways in which a good, solid, fixed blade knife, even one this small, will help you out in a lot of situations uh, that you are just not planning on. The SC Azula, a very cool EDC fixed blade knife for emergency or daily use. I'm the late Boy Scout. We'll see you later.